Okay everyone, this is our new addition to the family, which is Harper. She's, uh, what is she now? She's six months old now. She's uh, a Cavalier King Charles, like Havana, her other dog. And settled in very quickly, haven't we? Taken over, basically. I really should call her the time machine because I basically end up wasting loads and loads of time with her because she's such a cutie, aren't you? Eh? Right, off you go. I've got to make a video. Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. And if you're new, welcome to the channel. So tonight is going to be clear and of course, as always, I'm going to be imaging. I'm going to have my observatory open as I'm working on a few projects. And I'm also going to have a mobile rig in the garden, which I'd like to show you now. So what I've got is Altair Astro's rather fantastic EDQ 70mm. So it's a quadruplet scope. It's 350mm focal length F5. And it really does take some superb images. On the back of that, I've got Altair Astro's magnetic filter drawer, and in there I've got their Tri RGB filter, which I'm going to start the image off with so I get some nicely coloured stars. And then I'm going to move it just to use the built in UVIR cut filter, which is on this full frame camera, the 24CFX. An absolutely superb camera, and will give me a lovely wide view tonight on the area I'm photographing. So the dark shark is in the constellation of Cepheus. Also up with the dark shark, just above it, is another dark nebula known as LDM1250. Hasn't got a more exotic name, unfortunately, but that's the way it goes. The dark shark is extremely well named. And I took an image of this uh, a few years ago. I tried from my home when I used to live near the coast in South End on Sea, but the light pollution was just too severe there. I couldn't really get the image. I went away on a, a cloud camp with the UK Cloud Magnets, a star party, um, and I was able to, in some really lovely dark skies, in Ludlow, in Shropshire, I was able to use my 130 PDS uh, with a mono camera and I used LRGB filters and I managed to capture this of the dark shark and I was really happy with it. I'd finally captured this target. But um, I like the idea of a slightly wider field of view. So this rig tonight is gonna give me that. The 70 EDQ um, with the 24 CFX I have got sitting on my Ioptron CEM26, which has got the built-in iPolar and is a really lovely little lightweight mount that uh, performs extremely well, guides at a lovely level, and is super quiet too. Not as quiet as the new harmonic mounts, but really close. Everything is controlled by a Mealy PC and a Pegasus Powerbox Advance. There's a lot of wires there. On top there, I've also got a uh, little mini Wi-Fi, travel Wi-Fi, which gives off a hotspot so should I be away from home, um, I can still connect into it via remote desktop and control it. Um, the only other way, because I use Google remote desktop, is I need a Wi-Fi connection. I can tether it to my phone, but obviously if there's no phone signal, and sometimes when you go remote there isn't, that will give off its own hotspot, allowing me to connect to it and control it uh, from my laptop or iPad or whatever I choose to connect through. the dark shark is in the constellation of Cepheus um, and is about 650 light years away and spans about 15 light years across so it's a very large target. I've only imaged this before properly in mono 
uh, but I do want to try and give a, a good bit of acquisition now with a one shot colour. I did visit it very briefly a few months back when I was evaluating a scope that Altair Astro had lent to me, which was their 60 ED scope, fantastic little starter scope. Uh, and also really lightweight, so perfect for travelling with. Um, and that had really captured it quite quickly. I was quite impressed. It uh, it came out very well. And I think at the time I was using the 533 one-shot colour. And um, it was, uh, yeah, I was quite pleased with the results. But I really do want to try and get some more detail this time, longer acquisition, and try and get more of the sky in. So you'll have to wish me luck. I must be completely bonkers, but tonight I'm actually going to try and run five rigs. Well, three telescope rigs and two camera with DSLR and lens rigs. So um, I'm going to have my CT10 up on WR134. I'm going to have my VX6 on the EQ6 up. Uh, and that'll be on the Lobster Claw Nebula. They're both sitting in my observatory. I'm going to have the... 70 EDQ on the Chem 26 up in the garden and then I'm going to have my Canon 6D which is an Astro modified camera doing a time lapse of the 70 EDQ capturing the uh, Dark Shark hopefully and then I'll have my EOS R somewhere else maybe doing a star trail or a time lapse I'm not sure yet so yep yeah, I'm gonna go for it tonight I'm gonna have a lot of stuff running so uh, you'll have to wish me luck it'll be like that sort of trick people do where they're spinning the plates on the sticks and they're having to run up and down on all the sticks to uh, get anything that's not working working um, I'm guaranteed that something won't work or something won't play ball and I'll be juggling like mad but uh, fingers crossed I'll have a good night and I'll have some nice results to share with you. So I thought I'd come into my observatory and show you my other two rigs and the projects that they're gonna be on, and what equipment I've got attached. So I'm just gonna open the roof so you can have a look and we'll go over what I've got. So on one of my peers I've got the EQ6R Pro and attached to that I've got the Orion Optics VX6 which is a 750mm F5 Newtonian. Um, I've got attached to that the 294mm Pro and I've got that on an off-axis guider and in the filter wheel we've got the Antlia 3 nanometer SHO filters and the Antlia LRGB uh, Pro V filters. On the other pier I have my main scope and rig which is my EQ8R Pro and on top of that is the Orion Optics CT10 the carbon fibre ultra Newtonian scope. Its native focal length is 1200 millimeters but at the moment I'm using the Starizona Nexus coma corrector which is also reducing it brings it down to 900 millimeters and f 3.6 natively it's f 4.8 the camera i've got on there is the 2600 mm pro and in the pegasus filter wheel which is a really nice filter wheel as it happens i've got the altair astro 3 nanometer filters now i'm going to be doing a separate video about those filters um, and they are actually exceptional. I did have some three nanometer SHO filters that performed great by Antlia, uh, but when I dropped down to the F3.6, they stopped working as well as they did. The HA and O3 were okay, but the S2, complete fail. It had a big flare on it. Um, I think it was just the speed. It just couldn't handle it. Now the Altair Astro filters are only made to work down to f4, however at f3.6 no problems whatsoever. So I can report that they are actually fine. Um, I don't know how fast they'd go, I don't know if they'd work on a RASA, but I do know that if you've got a slightly faster scope going down to sort of f3.6, no problems at all, fantastic filters. 
So the scope over there is doing the Lobster Claw Nebula and I'm working on narrowband SHO. And the CT10 is working on WR134, the Wolf Riot Star. And I'm doing that in HOO. I did start off as SHO, but I found that there's hardly any sulfur in it at all. And most of the best images I've seen have been HOO images. So I'm focusing on HOO. I want to try and get about 50 hours. Uh, Simon of Simon's Astro has said that he wants to do it too. So we've had a look at our framing to see if we can get them as similar as possible. Hopefully we can put our data together and get a really good image. So we'll keep you posted on that one. Right, let's close it up and get ready for tonight.